In the previous video, I went over the different voxel sculpting techniques inside of 3D Code, and towards the end of that video, we ended up making a simple robot arm, a simple prop, just to kind of show you guys how you can make something super quickly by just using seven to eight different tools inside of 3D Code. And we can also use those exact same tools to do some even more complex sculpting inside of 3D Code, which I'll definitely go over in the future videos. For today though, we're gonna go over texturing. Now, why do I use texturing inside of 3D Code? The answer is simple, it's because you can literally hand paint textures. I would say it's similar to Substance Painter, and it's awesome, you don't have to worry about any UV mapping or any weird topology or retopoing, everything is automatic, it does it for you. We do have to follow certain procedures, certain workflows to get to that point first. So if you just follow along this video, it's step by step, you'll definitely be able to catch it. All right, so in the previous video, we left up here where I kind of just went over and sculpted out this robot arm. It was pretty cool. I mean, it was, it's pretty simple. If you haven't checked out that video, definitely go check it out. I also went over some of the tools that I used to make all this um, to definitely have a look at that. So for now, we're going to go into texturing now. So first things first, you want to make sure that your symmetry is turned off on each layer. To do that, you would want to like click on the layer and press S on your keyboard and make sure it's unchecked and under enable symmetry because it kind of messes up the whole retopo process. Once you've done all that, we're going to shift click all these layers. I'm going to do right click and I'm going to click to global space first. Kind of recenters the pivot and everything and everything. And then I'm going to hit right click and then fill, fill voids. And then we're going to do close invisible holes. Cool. So once we're done with that, uh, with everything selected, I'm going to right click and then go to retopo via decimation. And then here, this, so this is a very important step. It's going to decimate your model because right now it's very high poly. So it's going to ask you how much do you want to decimate it? So you want to keep your poly count roughly maybe close to 50,000. If it's something that's super complex, then you can go up to 100,000, but I would stay around 50,000 or below that. For something like this, I'm probably gonna aim something like less than 50,000 because it's not really a super complex looking model. And here it's the reduction percentage, so you can put a percentage up here to kind of easily calculate how much you wanna reduce it. So you just gotta play it around with it. Let me see 95, so that's still too high, 95. Let's try 97, um, 98. Let's do 97.5. That's close enough. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. Hit OK, just give it a sec. It's gonna do its thing. Cool, so this is your retopo. So as you can see, it did a pretty good job. And you know, the way it works, like, it's really good at analyzing where there's a lot of detail, it'll put more topology down there and wherever there's less detail, it'll put less topology down there. And right now it's in, you know, triangles. And I know there's a way to get quads as well. I'm not sure how. I did try doing it once, but I failed miserably. So we're just gonna keep it the way that it is right now. And uh, at this point, just don't touch anything. Like don't play around with, with any of these buttons. Don't mess around with anything up here because then you're gonna end up doing something that you're not supposed to do. And then I will not be able to help you out because I have no idea what all of this does. So <laughs> stay away from everything. So next thing you wanna do, you wanna go to bake and then we'll do bake with normal map. And we'll leave everything on it by you know default settings and hit OK. And then here it's gonna ask you. Um, so we're gonna change a few things up here, I think. Yeah, we're gonna change it from here to I would change it to Blender or whatever software you're gonna render your models in. If you're doing Maya, ZBrush, whatever, just change it into that. I'm gonna do Blender because you know I usually render everything out with my lighting and stuff in Blender. And then we will go up here and change our textures to 4K and it automatically changes you know for everything up here so you just gotta click it once everything else can stay the way it is we'll hit ok up here then just give it a minute cool so right now we're good now we need to do one more thing we need to bake um, ambient occlusion and a curvature map so now i'm gonna so right now it's on the retopo mode up here i'm gonna go up here and go to paint and then up here, previous versions of 3D code, um, when you had to calculate occlusion and curvature, it used to be under the textures option, but in the, with the new update, they changed it. So it took me a minute to kind of like <laughs> look for it. But anyways, it's, it's under edit. We're gonna, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna calculate 
uh, ambient occlusion and curvature so you're gonna you're gonna go to edit up here and then let's do calculate occlusion and up here we're gonna keep everything um, you know whatever's on the default settings and we'll just check separate paint objects hit okay cool it's cool so once we got the occlusion you see how like there's a little shadow underneath it's highlighted now the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna go back to edit and then do calculate curvature <clears throat> I think curvature will leave it on the default settings as well hit okay it's been a minute since I've played around with texturing and 3d code it's really cool though you guys might be wondering why have I not textured in 3d code is because I haven't really been using 3d code as much lately because I've been lazy and um, and a lot of the projects that I was working on it was a lot more convenient texturing inside of blender with just PBR textures so and I was just experimenting with that and it kind of worked in my favor but moving forward I'm definitely gonna be using 3d code a lot more in my workflow for texturing okay so we're done with that now the next thing we're gonna do up here now a couple of things so you'll have this window pop up up here you have your brushes and then we're gonna change to smart materials these are just some preloaded materials that come with 3d co and the different kinds up here and then here these are your layers so for now what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete all of this all of these volumes and stuff because we don't need these anymore everything is baked in already so I would just hit the trash can multiple times and just get rid of that and then we'll also go up here to surface just hide this so you see sometimes with ambient occlusion it gives you these weird black artifacts and that's a sign that we didn't like we decimated it way too much so whenever that happens you can just hide your ambient occlusion map you don't really need it anymore at that point because you know you can always re always add an ambient occlusion map in blender as well so for now, I'm just going to turn it off because I don't really like the little artifacts. And it's not really a big deal even if you do want to keep it because you can always paint over it in Photoshop at the end of the day. I mean, because we're concept artists, we're not worried about the 3D image, we're worried about a final design, right? So you can always just paint over it. Because with the ambient occlusion, you get these real nice crevices, you get like nice shadows up here. But sometimes it doesn't work, so I'm just going to turn it off for now though. So having a normal map, it helps in preserving all your detail up here. If I turn my normal map off you can see how like it's all you know crappy looking if you turn it back on it's really cool so yeah it's baked in so it's it's really cool okay so what we're gonna do next is so when you start texturing you want to make sure you have a base texture first and then we build on top of it all right so I'm gonna make a new layer first you can name your layers and whatnot I'm just gonna let it be the way it is and then you got your materials right up here. If you click up here, there are different options, different categories. You got stone up here, you got plastic, you got wood. There's a lot up here. For now, I'm just gonna stick to the metal option. Come on. Okay. I'm gonna stick to the metal option for now. All right, cool. And then let's try Let's try metal light, see what that looks like. So when you click on a material, the preview box comes up and you can preview and see what it looks like. So I, I really like this. It has a really nice grungy texture to it. So we can definitely start off with this. And what, what I'm gonna do next is before adding this material on this layer, I'm gonna right click on it and do attach to current layer. Okay. So what that does, if I want to make any edits to this uh, material itself, it's not going to affect my default material because what it does sometimes if you don't attach it to your layer and you start playing around with the different settings, it'll like change the default shader and we don't want that. Now to change, to edit this a little bit more, I can right click on it again and click on smart material editor. And when I do this little window pops up, let's move everything to the side. And there are a couple of things you can play around here. Um, first of all is the cavity. If you increase it you see how like the grunginess goes away so you can play around with that and then the cavity area width it's pretty much the little i think it's the it's the black stuff that's around around your model 
it's not super intense on this so it's hard to tell but you can yeah play around with that and then there's a thing for dirt edges metal i never go too much into detail with these um you've got your depth up here so you can just pull these sliders left and right and see what works so let me zoom in a little bit okay cool so if i got this right now and three goes it does automatically save so and then roughness metalness you can also click up here and then these are like maps as well so you can play around with the map and it'll affect your mesh a little bit let's hit done and then if i click up here i think i can change my color so if you want a different color you can definitely do that as well i'm just gonna leave it in gray i think i like the gray the gray touch and the edges you want a different color so the edges this is a cool way let's say if you want to add like some rust or something you can take like an orange color of some sort hit okay so it's got that oops it's not working that well honestly so let's hit control let's go back to whatever the default was make it black okay cool so let's say let's say this is this is my model this like i'm happy with where i'm at so what i'm gonna do next is hit okay let's save this and then i want to assign this material to my entire entire model you can either come in and paint it in this way it's really fun or what i would recommend is if you click on the fill option and if it's set to your brush it fills individually on each model that's separate so that's why i had it separate when i was making this i had pieces set on separate layers and this is where it comes really handy if you don't want it to be on every single thing and if you click on change from your brush to a rectangle and you click and drag it'll fill everything perfect so yeah so in just a few seconds like you know i've got a texture that's going on right now and then now what i can do on top of this I can make a new layer and let's go up here and let's click on dirt so you can play around with these as well so I'm gonna click on dust and see what it looks like if I do add it so you know I got some little dust up here so yeah dust is good for so you see how like dust it's like it's like messing up in this little area right there I don't know why it's going away but it's fine. I mean, it's, it's not a, it's not a big deal. You can always just paint over it in Photoshop. So I wouldn't be worried too much about it. And what you can do, you can use the dust map for adding some rust to it. I mean, it says dust, but like, you know, we don't care. And we can play around with different options. Let's see. Let's try this one. This one's pretty cool. I think I like the first one a little better. Let's go with this one, okay. And then once again, I'm gonna right click on this, click on attach to current layer. All right, perfect. And then we'll right click smart material editor. And then here I can change the color and definitely do look up some references before you start doing this. I'm just winging it for now just to kind of demonstrate what it looks like. So we can go a little bit orangish or reddish like this and you're like the goal is not to be perfect right so get ourselves a strong base that we can paint over like so if you're getting areas where that you don't like just don't spend hours trying to fix it and using all the different settings because you know it's not going to get you anywhere this is cool and what i can also do is let me assign this real quick i'm just going to click and drag So we got this going on up here and then what you can also do up here are different blend modes so if i change it to multiply you know you get a much better result so you can definitely play around with these different blend modes as well color probably make everything brighter yeah <laughs> that's crazy and let's go back to multiply and i can lower down my opacity just a little bit but click it. Oh, come on maybe i'll just type it in yeah, if you bring a mouse on the opacity and you can like use it as a slider, let's do maybe 50%. 
Uh, I don't like it that much. Let's try color burn. Okay, color burn looks a little bit better. Okay, yeah, so we got this like super rusty metal. So it's kind of like, you know, a broken, hasn't been used for like a while. And it's a little too noisy, I do agree on that, but it's fine, you know, we can paint over it. It's not, it's not a big deal, it's no big deal. What I can do next is let's make a new layer. And now here I'm gonna show you guys how we can paint textures. So let's say you want a different color up here and you just want uh, certain parts of it. So if I go to my brushes, let's go to the Artman pen pack or let's see, let's go rusty metal. And I do recommend having like a stylus or something. And let me, oh, take my brush first. Do it one more time. Come on. Okay. And so like I can paint in text. Now this is not, this is just a default because I don't have a material selected. And up here we got certain options. So up here, this is the depth, opacity, the color opacity, and the glossiness. So we can play around with those as well. Right now I'm gonna turn off my glossiness and I'm just gonna keep my opacity. Let's bring it to 100. And we'll leave the depth at 100 also. So you know you can add, you can do like more things to this model. And I don't really like the depth. Sometimes it's a little too strong. So let's turn it off for now. If I turn it off, I can just like paint a different color on top of this, which I think is really cool. Maybe the glossiness, I'll probably turn that on and just reduce my intensity to maybe like 50%. See what that looks like. So, yeah. But then you know what it does? It does hide most of your texture. So I would like pair that up with a blend mode of some sort. Maybe if you put on overlay, you know, it'll maintain that texture as well. Or let's try soft light. Let's try maybe hard light. Yeah. So yeah, you just gotta play around with it and see what you like. I don't really usually paint on my models. I just use the basic textures for the most part. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is, let's make a new layer again. If I only have my depth selected, I can add more detailing on this. So if I shift to get the box, you see how like I get this nice, I get another detail. Like I didn't model this in, it's just another addition to my normal map. So if you wanted to add anything towards the end and you don't want to model stuff out, you can just click and drag in, do that kind of thing. It's really cool. Do that here. Click and drag here. I totally forgot, you can turn on symmetry as well. Enable symmetry. Let's do it on. Z axis, perfect. And so yeah, this is really cool. Maybe I'll change my brush. This one's a little too strong. So yeah, you can get these indications of extrusions, but these are not really extrusions for the most part. And then we can also do maybe if I change back to my brush and just click and get that, make it a little bit smaller. So it's really cool. You could like spend like hours just doing this kind of thing. So you get the idea. So it's, it's really cool for adding little details. Maybe I can put some right there. And you can just paint in. And I wanna try something. If I have the color turned on, you can do that as well. Let's say there's like a logo or something up here. Yeah, that's cool. Control Z. Perfect. So what else can we do? Let me see if I can change the color on these guys right there. So I'm gonna use my same material. Let's see, let's right click. Can we copy this? Well, I'll just use a new layer, keep it simple. And let's go back up here, metal. Let's use, let's use steel next time. Let's see what steel looks like. And so at this point you wanna like start breaking your you know, materials a little bit. Saving. Let's right click on this. 
uh, attached to current layer but yeah this is so much fun you can you know i would definitely recommend you guys spend some time and figure out and play around with this a little bit cavity cavity width and sometimes on the smart materials it doesn't change up here so you're gonna have to like assign it then make edits to your mesh let's move this a little bit so here maybe we can put that here as well I want to reduce the black cavity up here. So that's where I click on this again. Oh, that's on my layer actually. Smart material, I think it's the same thing. Let's see if I can play around with that. And you can also turn off your layers to see what what's affecting what. Oh wait, hold on. I need to be this to be up here before I do that. Okay, perfect. Oh, I think it's the cavity from the previous layer. Okay. And then it updates automatically as well. So yeah, definitely uh, do look up some references before going into this. It'll definitely help you with your process a little bit better. It's nice and shiny looking. Maybe I can come up here, make another layer. And then here, what I'll do, I'll just turn my color on. And grab my brush, rectangle, let's change our color to maybe blue. And for the most part, I'm, you know, always experimenting and seeing what is working and what is not working and planning accordingly. Because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You just have to like play around with it and see what you like and what you don't like. Which is why I have a, having a clear goal in mind while doing this is really helpful instead of brainlessly just doing stuff like I'm doing right now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, the idea up here is to just show you guys how powerful, how quickly you can just get these textures in, you know? And you know, um, sometimes you don't even have to, you can just paint in if that's, if you're comfortable doing it that way. You know, some, you know I really like the hands-on experience that you get with 3D code for the most part. We can just do this kind of thing. I don't know. Well, and all of this is real time. It's not sped up or anything. So I just want to keep everything as real as possible. And I'm also showing you like whatever mistakes I might make because nobody's perfect when you're doing working on stuff like this. And then here, let's off, see what happens. Okay. So apparently my steel material is a little too strong up there. And I'm not exactly sure how to change it, which is fine, you know, because I can just paint over it. So I'm not going to stress about it. I'm just going to let it be the way it is. The same thing with this part. Cool. All right. Perfect. So whenever, so let's say you're done texturing everything, right? What we, want, what, what we need to do next is we can render it inside of 3D code, but I like to take it a step further and do it in Blender instead. But if you want to just render inside of 3D code, let me go ahead and save this first. Saving, okay. And we'll turn off our symmetry. And let's change from paint to render. And so when you hit render, you know, don't freak out if this happens. You're like, oh my God, where my textures go? They're still up there. You just need to turn off your root on sculpture. So, so anyway, it's not too bad. You know, it's actually pretty good. I feel like in the paint room, it just exaggerates everything a lot more. But I think it's not, it's okay. <laughs> I was thinking it's gonna turn out a lot bad, than, a lot worse than what I thought it's gonna be. So, and you see like the blue, I didn't paint that much, but you get the idea, it looks cool. You know, you can just um, fill it up and paint parts of it. You know, I think I'm gonna go back. It's bothering me, let's go back. And I wanna paint a little bit of that blue so that it doesn't look incomplete. So I quickly do this. Maybe you'll we'll put some right here. Uh, let's see if you can put some right there. Uh, 
Okay, this is, this is, this looks okay. I think I'll put some down here too. Okay, this ain't too bad. I think I can work with this for now. For the time that I've, <laughs> I have that I'm spending on this. Okay, perfect. So yeah, let's just leave it, let's just leave it like that for now. Turn on some, oh my God. Okay, let's go back, render. So cool. Turn off symmetry. So yeah, once you hit the render option, you can like choose an angle you like. You can also change your lighting a little bit. I think it's I just lighting. Yeah, it's this one right here. You can play around with the angle of your lighting. Find something you like. I think this is pretty cool. I think it's on orthographic right now. So if you press F1, F1, it uh, goes to orthographic. And you click back and it goes back to the regular. Okay. So what, what you can do next is, you know, probably get um, different different angles. I usually get a perspective render and then a front and side. Usually top helps as well. And bottom, I think bottom is not too necessary, but front, side, back, whatever it is, it's good for presentation. So you would just select your angle, whichever angle you like. Let's see something like this, looks good. And then I can just hit render up here. It's gonna ask you where do you want to save it just like the folder that you want to save it at and yeah just go ahead and render it okay so i'm done with my render so it does a pretty good job in rendering you know it's you know for showcasing a design and you can easily just you know throw these in photoshop and you know fix these weird areas and these little artifacts maybe clean up your edges as well so it's easy i mean you can easily make those changes that's why i don't worry too much about it being super noisy or anything because i'm not a 3d artist at the end of the day and i don't want to like spend too much time trying to troubleshoot. Okay, now in, now if you want to render this in Blender, you got to export out your model and the textures. So we're going to go up to the render tab. Let's go to the paint tab up here again. And we'll go to file and then you see this option, export objects and textures. We'll click that. It's going to ask you to export geometry, export mesh. Click that. And it's going to ask you where do you want to export, export your mesh. So definitely create a folder where you have everything up there. So I'm just gonna go ahead, make a new folder. Actually, yeah, and make sure you change it to an FBX. FBX works a lot better. Let's just call this demo mesh. All right, and then it's gonna ask you the units. Let's leave it in centimeters. And then here, well, yeah, and this is for textures. It's gonna ask you where do you wanna save your textures. It's the exact same thing. I don't know why it opens up a different window. So don't freak out if you see this up here. Just go ahead and look for your folder where you wanna save it all. I think, God, I have so many folders up here. <laughs> so definitely have having a more organized structure. It really helps. That's the one thing I've learned with digital art. You gotta keep everything so organized, dude. Like, it's crazy. Hit OK. And then this is fine. You can leave that the way it is. And then here we'll change this to blender cycles because that's what I'll be using. If you're using anything else, definitely just choose that. We'll just do blender cycles. And then here it's gonna ask you what kind of maps you wanna um, export. So we will take off emission and displacement. We just need diffuse, metalness, roughness, normal. Yeah, these are pretty good. And then we're gonna hit export. Let's give it a sec, it's gonna do its thing. All right, so I think we're good now. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna close 3D code and get into Blender. So we got that taken care of and I've got my textures up here and the FBX. These are all the texture maps. So we're just gonna put that up here in Blender. Let's go to file, we'll hit import, click on FBX and then click my file. I'm gonna give it a sec. There you go. All right, so we have it up here now. All right, perfect. Oh God, I hate how like all my hotkeys just change suddenly. So yeah, we got our mesh. Now it has this default material up here. We're gonna go ahead and remove all the materials that are up here one by one because we don't need all of that. Go up here, remove that. Go up here, remove that, perfect. 
And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select everything. Hit Control J. Make this all one mesh. Cool. Let's go up here, open up my node editor. And then change this to shader editor. Yeah, to sign a new material. Click this up here. And then control shift T. And I can find where my materials are. Let's see what's under this folder. I'm going to select all of these and principal texture. <laughs> that did not work. It's okay. We'll just do it manually. So let's just click and drag and drop for the most part. Do this first. So that's the diffuse. Then plug diffuse and base color. Let me click the render options that I can see. Okay. Cool. And then we're gonna go up here. Metalness. Normal. Roughness. Okay. And metalness, we'll take that, put in the metallic node. Then roughness, make sure it's under non color. And then roughness, we'll put that up here. Okay, and then normal, we make a normal map first. Okay, we'll plug this in the normal. Cool. So we pretty much have all of our textures here. And you know that you'll always have um, a little bit of difference. Like it won't look exactly like how it rendered inside of 3D code. So you, you just have to like adjust your lighting and see what works best and then use that. And you can definitely play around with your color as well. Let's say I can I'm gonna delete this spotlight. Let's just put a sun up here. Shift A, light, let's do a sun. Okay, so I mean, yeah, it, look, it looks all right. It's not the very best because I didn't really spend too much time on it. Um, but you, as you can tell, it's, it's really easy the way you do things up here. And right now it's on EV. Maybe let me change it on. Let me change it to cycle, see how that looks like. All right, guys, so I created a simple lighting setup where I had, you know, a three point lighting setup, had a key light, fill light, backlight and then I had this box for fog pretty much so you know here you can definitely play around with the different blender settings and cycles and for the for the floor I just added a roughness map of like a concrete texture to kind of get that look let me kind of show you guys what it looks like let's go rendered didn't want to change my camera <laughs> so you can nicely it up this mesh case it on fire right now so Let's go back and now you can render it. Okay, so we're now in Photoshop. I rendered a front view and a back view for the most part. And I just did a minor paint over on top of it. Just go before and after, you know, just a little bit, just kind of clean up your edges a little bit. And that's, that's it, you know, you get so much detail and all of this was done in like a single day. So in a couple of hours. So it's, it's really fast and I would probably spend some more time painting over this right now for the demo. I just did a quick one and remember how like I had these weird artifacts at the bottom. I just used a content aware. If you're not sure how to do that, if you click, if you go to your layers and we make a selection, let's do that and then right click and then click on fill. Make sure it's set to content aware. Click OK. So it just fills it up with like surrounding information and then you can paint on top of it. So that's what I'm talking about, right? I mean, there's no point in like stressing out over things that are not working out in 3D. You can easily come to Photoshop and just paint on top of it. Let's say this part up here is way too dark for your taste. So maybe just make your brush a little bit bigger and just, you know, just cover it up and then grab your eraser and just erase it out a little bit. So, so yeah, um, that's how I would approach it. 
So to wrap everything up, I usually make another sheet where I'll put my final renders at the top here and then my callouts at the bottom. So this is why I like rendering inside of 3D code because you get really nice and clean renders with uniform lighting. And the one in Blender, you can get the same result in Blender as well, but you know, it's always nice to add some, you know, cool lighting just to showcase your product a little better. Uh, and yeah, that, that's about it for the most part. This is the procedure that I pretty much use for most of my props whenever I make them inside of 3D code, where I'll just texture everything and then render out a side view, front view, top view. Sometimes I'll do a bottom view as well, depending on how complex uh, the model itself is. If there, if there are two sides that are completely different looking, I'll do a right side and a left side. So the more renders you get, the better it's gonna be. But for this, you know, just there, it was pretty much the same thing on both the sides. So. If you want to take it even a step further, you could do a line drawing on top of it. And that's also an option. Depends if you want to do it. Um, but for now, this is pretty much it. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. So the point of this video is to kind of give you guys a basic idea on how texturing works inside of 3D code. Now that we've had, we had a video that I posted on sculpting and I also posted a video on texturing, which is this one right here. We can move on to the more advanced topics as well. So we can uh, work on specific things that you would use 3D code, specific things you would want to model out in 3D code. So I already had some requests on doing spaceships and whatnot. So we'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely make a video on that too. It's something that I'm still figuring out myself because I've noticed that after using 3D code for a while now, I've come to realize that it's really good for organic stuff, but for hard surface, it's a little tricky, but it's not impossible. With enough practice, you can definitely make anything inside of 3D code. So thanks again for sticking around and definitely do subscribe to my channel like and follow and share this video and I will see you guys in the next one.